Duskwood has in her possession a car alternator and a truck alternator. That and nine food place loyalty cards. She will need ten if she is to become the sidekick of food person. After losing one of the only other people she's seen out here that, well, isn't directly trying to kill her. Dusk knows that she needs to act now. That she needs to bring food person to somewhere that's a little safer than the uh, food cave. And so, she is going to continue her search for that final food place card and hopefully bring food person back home safe and sound. Kia ora, Legionnaires. Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead, No Hope. Where we are going to be going straight back out into the night with Dusk, and we're actually going to go in the direction of the thugs. It's been a few releases since I've been playing last, and there's a chance that whatever was going on with the thugs has been resolved. But I do think it's maybe one of these houses that's causing an issue. When I load up, I do get an error about a specific house. I think it's 9B or something like that. So it could be one of these houses on the map that is causing issues. And we do know that the thugs are based in, I think, this house here. So here's what we're going to try and do, first of all. We're going to try and make our way down along the south, kind of around where the thugs were and we're going to see if we run into any issues right now we have our claws out we're ready to fight with tai chi we now have safe mode on so we're going to start to roam through this area that we don't know too much about and we're going to see what we can find and hopefully we'll be able to make it over towards where the rest of those thugs are because well dusk knows that they are dangerous and whether or not it's the right thing to do engaging them i think she'll be doing that tonight. Ooh, okay, we've got a zombie that's gonna try and, no doubt, clamber its way through the glass towards us here, and so we're just gonna knock it back through there a few times, Dusk doing some great damage with that palm strike. It looks like we've got a little bit of smoke over here, a hazy cloud, so there probably is more of that downstairs. Let's check that wallet, a nickel and a penny. Okay, peeking downstairs, yeah, we don't want to go down here, although there are some books, children's books, backgammon set and a go set, okay, yeah, let's not mess around with that right now, the gas, while it's not going to kill Dusk, it will certainly weaken her, and we don't want that right now, so I'm just going to check and see what else we can find here, if there's anything of interest, you know, we will be checking the, um, the kitchen, because I feel like there is a chance that we'll be able to find some stuff there. We're also going to open that window, allow the decayed zombie to clamber on in, because if it breaks the glass, that's just so much louder. And speaking of loud, we got a boomer glutton just hanging out here. So we're going to close that door there, um, let them glutton about, and yeah, I suppose I should be checking the bins as well. Not much else here though, by the looks of things, so we'll probably be moving on from this property. We're not going to mark it as explored, because we haven't fully explored it just yet, and as you can see, we're getting closer towards that location up here. Uh, we also have a crater down below. Okay, all right, well, Dusk, let's be careful, let's be wary. And I'm trying to go just that little bit further around where we know that those enemies are. Tough zombie, let's give you a few good whacks. And we're doing some great damage with those criticals. I'm very impressed with that but yeah look at that we delivered a wicked bite to the tough zombie but do no damage so we didn't manage to pierce through its hide it seems but hey the horns are getting in there we're getting some palm strikes off as well dusk as ever is doing a great job and there we go food place loyalty card we now have everything we need to be able to get food person to um well trust us a little bit more as a uh a sidekick, first of all. And you know what? If that's what Food Person needs, that's what Dusk will do. We're going to take that bandage, as that's quite the prize. Turn safe mode on as we get closer. And you know what? You've lost quite a bit of weight recently. You might want to eat more food. Yeah, are we considered underweight yet? No, we're normal. But I guess that does mean we need to look at eating more often. So let's go and knock back some of the canned pineapple. I also do think that we... Must have just kind of crested over to midnight. Yeah, okay, so that's that's kind of why we got that message. Because we went back down to zero calories for this day. But hey, we've had something to eat. We will have more to eat soon. Um, I think I would like to put in a quick save here, though. Just before we get too close to the um, weird temporal space as we don't want to lose the progress that we've made so far we haven't made much progress but you know it is a little frustrating to have to go back over things a few times okay 
So, what do we have going on in this little household here? There is a book. A book of essays. Okay, well we're not so interested in that right now. A thermal electric suit. I mean, good for winter, for sure. You know what, I might actually want to take that. Let's go and put that into our pack. And we've got some adventure novels, some newspaper, not much else. Ooh, maple syrup, cinnamon garlic powder. You know what, I wouldn't mind trying to take some of these spices here. So, maple syrup will take the peanut butter we'll have right now, sure. Black pepper, chili powder, cinnamon, garlic, salt, all good stuff. The artificial sweetener, we probably won't take for now. Um, the wheat cereal, we will also take, and I think we'll probably use that right now. We've spotted a grappler, uh, probably over to wherever that shocker was. Let's just uh, knock back the wheat cereal. And I suppose we could have some peanut butter. We're currently full right now, so let's not worry about that. Okay, now, where were they? To the north, it seems. Okay, yeah, quite a ways to the north. Right, so the house that we got the warning about, so the house that we could detect people in last time was this house here. At least I'm pretty sure it was. So we may still have some folks over there. So we want to be cautious while making our way in that direction. Ooh, and we've got ourselves a boomer. A boomer that is already injured. A boomer that has the magicalism tag on them. Let's go and mine hammer them. It is going to make noise, for sure. But if there is anything else around here, it will come on over towards that. I think that shocker is gonna start making its way down now. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hitting in that direction. What's on the ground here? A smartphone, some breaches. All right, well. Looks like they were throwing up over this place. So I think they could have been fighting the in, the original inhabitants of this. But I guess the thing is, if we do encounter people here, we will have to be rather cautious. Zombie, hello. Let's move up towards you. Take a strike. Take you out. Check what you got. And we'll check the rest here. There's some Pilsner in the fridge. Doesn't exactly seem like a fortification. So, you know, maybe, maybe they aren't set up in this house. Uh, we do have some fresh looking blood out the front and some thin smoke as well. Okay. We're cashing that shocker in the distance yet again. All right, and we do have a zombie out the front and the remains of a zombie. So we have had some killing going on outside. Okay, hello you. A few good strikes there, takes you down. A supplement bottle and another food place loyalty card. Maybe we should just grab some extras, you know, just in case. That's a rebar spear on the ground there. So they definitely killed our uh, people at some point here. And I'm also thinking the things that we're seeing on the ground here, well, I thought they could have been their original equipment, but maybe not. Got some cigarettes on that one, a smartphone, and yet another regular zombie that we'll quickly take down. And we'll see what else is in this house. Becoming Jackson, I think we're gonna head upstairs first of all. And yet again, I'm gonna be quick saving quite a bit here, just because we haven't run into whatever was causing that problem for us last time, but that problem could still be around here. Oh boy, green superhero bodysuit and it fits. Um, <laughs> I mean, if Dusk is going to be a sidekick, she may very well need it yet. A tight fitting bodysuit made of lycra, covers the whole body from neck to toe. It's primarily colored green and has a superhero design. It doesn't have great protection or anything. Um, the armor is comfortable. It is also worn close to the skin, so you can wear it underneath of things. Uh, I think we're gonna grab this. Fate has ordained it. Dusk and hello, zombie dog. All right, goodbye, zombie dog. Stab at the claws, stab at the horns is more than enough to do it. Okay, down below here, we have a regular suit and still no sign of people. So I don't think that this is any kind of fortification of theirs. We have under the hood, which I do believe we've already read. Yeah, I think we're just gonna be heading back downstairs. This house, in my mind, is now explored. So we'll mark it as such and Heading out onto the road here, we have a howling waif. We don't want you to howl and a simple knife spear. So yeah, I don't think those people are around anymore. We're gonna try and mind hammer the howling waif and we do regret. So we still suffer the effect of um, morale loss, even if we aren't directly killing something. And oh boy, yeah, like pieces of them flew out all over the place then. Butchery refuse. Let's catch our breath here for a moment. We've spotted a smoker. Okay, so. That we're probably going to try and see if we can mind hammer as well. Slam it and let's back away from that smoke dusk. Yet again, we'll try and catch our breath. Then let's head down towards where that smoke was. We've got a slathering biter over here. It has inhaled some of that smoke. There's more dead around here as well. I mean, this ain't nothing that dusk can't 
can't handle all. Corpse of Nun. So there was that weird era going on for a little while where zombies were getting a nun tag, but a Struthi Struthiomis zombie. So was it like a, a dinosaur zombie? I'm not sure. Well, we'll kill the ones that are here, first of all. <laughs> and then we'll have a look at that. It looks like we might have a... Um, a feral close to us we do so with the feral we are going to use our far hand to drag them in close so that they don't manage to hit us <laughs> with one of their rocks dusk doing some work there let's make sure that that feral stays dead that boomer i'd like to try and pop from a distance if we can let's just see what we got here oh okay no so yeah we do have that zombie corpse there but there's also Carlton Wiggins. We have a Foxborough roadmap here. There is a filter mask as well, a gold ring, a zucchini, um, a jean vest, and a glass bottle of fruit wine. I feel like we might want to take that. Also, a wood axe. We're going to put that into our pack because I think we only have the hatchet. We'll take the roadmap as well. Yes, I know it's considered stealing, but we're okay with that right now, Dusk. Also, the bike helmet is good head protection, but we can't really wear any of that stuff right now so let's see what else are we gonna grab here okay the fruit wine definitely and there was something else oh yes of course the wood axe all of that stuff seems like it's going to fit into our pack dangerously close ignore it it's fine okay we did manage to get everything in there the boomer is getting closer so we're gonna mind him that it's probably not gonna be enough to take it out that's a lie it totally is 33 damage the fist does work okay and it looks like we've got something on the ground there in the pack as well oh my gosh it's a gallon jug of cheap wine dusk you're lucky today can we fit that into our other pack yes we can yes we can feral human has been spotted stop inserting ah fine okay our salmon is a little low but we're gonna go for a far hand here pull it on over towards us strike it a few times and murder that thing we'll smash the corpse and let's go grab that wine again putting it into our pack there we go we've got it grabbed let's just wait a while catch our breath get again i'm gonna quick save i mean you don't find all this cheap wine and not save we got a brainless zombie down here who have who has a IFAC pouch with a bandage, some hemostatic powder, which we'll probably just try and take out of there, and a tourniquet. Probably worth us having more than one, because, uh, yeah. We start bleeding out heavily, we want to try and get that dealt with as soon as possible. So, um, I think eventually we are going to want to try and turn on a flashlight here, to try and see what we have going on in the area around here. Because we're getting really close to the gun shop, where all of this crap is going down, and the solar vehicle as well. So, might be a poor decision, but we're going to turn on our light, and we're going to see what is happening. So, we immediately hear someone there. Shonda Kraus calling out into the night, pleading, saying that she doesn't want to die. Perhaps she just saw the corpses of her comrades. We're going to turn off the light there, and we're going to try and carry on. A devourer starts to approach us. Dusk, let's get ready for that. We're going to go back a little bit further, and we are going to apply our voltaic strikes. We're going to do the electrical discharge as well, and then we're going to try and see if we can catch our breath. We'll stop for a moment. Okay, it doesn't know where we are just yet. Okay, all right. It's kind of trying to follow us. All right, and now we start to strike. 20 damage. Good. All right, let's just keep on striking here, Dusk. We've been grabbed. Not great. Hmm, let's just wait a turn. Okay, and we break the grab right away. Excellent. A critical finishes it as electricity ripples across its skin and cracks through the air around Dusk. Excellent. Let's wait. A shrieker has been spotted. Yeah, it probably saw the direction that we were coming from. So we're going to far hand it over towards us and try and quickly kill it. Dusk does that. Waiting again. All right, we probably want to move away from where the lightning happened because that's the last point that they would have seen something and also probably heard something as well. So the dead will be heading in this direction, which, you know, that isn't a bad idea if we do want to kind of try and clear the area a little bit, if we just, you know, take our time with all of this. Now, you, Olin Velasco. Hi there, you're very dead in that. That's an AR. Okay, we might want to try and see if we can just wear that, take it back with us. Got another purification tablet here. Thank you, Olin. I know this is going to be considered stealing, but I'm okay with us doing that right now. You got the simple knife spear on you, I see. A 10 gallon hat. Yep. All right, take it, take it. And you, you zombie cop. Yeah, not bloody bad. Let's just see, can we wear it? We can. It'll bump up our encumbrance by a bit. Let's see though, not much really because we're not wearing a backpack right now. So yeah, cool. Let's just keep that slung over our shoulder as now, okay, we're right 
by the electric vehicle. That solar panel is hanging on, <laughs> only just. Uh, but it's, I don't know if it's going to be worth us getting them. They are going to be quite difficult for us to repair. And plus, we're finding other solar panels elsewhere right now. I just want to see what else we've got down here among the bodies. Not too much from what we can see. We're going to turn our light on again just to see what we have going on. Oh, the vehicle belongs to Hell's Raiders. They claimed it. This is a vehicle that we were taking things from. At least I'm pretty sure. Oh no, maybe not. Maybe this was a different vehicle actually. But yeah, it's considered theirs. So maybe they were driving this through the town. I, not actually, I'm doing air quotation marks here. Obviously ran out of charge and then you know, tried to raid the gun store up here and it just went really, really bad for them. So there's definitely still one of them left up here. Perhaps Dusk may be able to try and question them, see what's going on, you know? Because yeah, this is around the region where we were when we just decided to peace out. We're going to grab that wrapped radiation badge because that could actually be kind of helpful. We do have a butcher's knife there on the ground, which what do we have right now? We've got our bayonet knife and we've got a carving knife. I feel like the butching knife or the butcher's knife is going to be better than the carving knife, but we can see. Let's just compare the two and see which is better at butchering. Okay, yeah, the butchering knife is better at butchering. So that's what we're going to go with. Let's go and drop our current carving knife there and put the butcher's knife into our pack. Wonderful. Hello, zombie. Hi there. Step on up and let's take you out. There we go. Okay, and let's keep on moving yet again. We're going to chuck in a quick save. I do think that we're okay here. It seems like we have made it through the entire area without any trouble. So whatever that was originally causing the trouble seems to be gone. The devourer though is not. So let's let it approach us here. We can knock it back if we feel like we need to. But right now, I think we're just going to try and flex our martial skill. Dusk doing some fantastic work here. Multiple attacks hitting their mark. And this thing, I think, was on full health when it first came over here. But we are... <laughs> We're just taking it apart. Dusk, let's pick up that cash card there. Looks like there was a photograph on one of the bodies. What is it? This is the heart achingly adorable snapshot of a large and incredibly fluffy Labrador. The dog sprawled upon a low bed with its huge paws outstretched in a light dusting of shed fur sprinkling the blankets, gripping a chew toy in its jaw, and with its head resting upon a drool splattered pillow, the canine is regarding the camera with a lopsided, doleful gaze. Cute but sad, you know, cute but sad. Got quite a few things in the dumpster back here, which is good to see, reassuring even. Hello, brainless zombie. Let's go and make sure that you stay dead as we continue making our way up a little bit further. Frederick Busto, Fug is here in the restaurant. At least that's what Dusk is detecting. We will go cautiously. That's someone different. Maisha Baggett. They are not currently aware of where we are. They are attacking to kill. They're wielding an aluminium bat and they are a member of the Hell's Raiders. At least going off of the markings that were on that electric car back there. Because that's how I'm kind of figuring Dusk was able to figure that out. Seeing those markings, knowing that she has had encounters with people like that before, and now we're hearing Chandra, or Shonda rather, Shonda Krauss in here. And there, okay, we can make them out in the darkness. She is injured, and I think she's an elf. Pointed ears, passing fear, elven build, yeah, hostile and aware of our presence. Dusk enters the restaurant, the two lock eyes. Shonda standing still. You gotta pay for that asshole. She says through gritted teeth, still just standing there. Takes a few steps closer. Shonda stands still. She's making no move to try and kill us. It says that she's hostile. It says that she's attacking to kill. Dusk isn't going to just kill someone. <laughs> Not without the emotional push. Before, with Walter, the person that was close, she could very likely believe that they were responsible. But Shonda here, yep, she's from the same group for sure. Right now, she's making no hostile action towards Dusk, so she's just going to keep on walking like nothing is different. We have a card reader here as well. We don't have that mask anymore. Your face is inadequate. But when has that stopped us? We could bash our way up here. Could there be another food person here? Is that a possibility? More than one food person? I don't know. The implications could be alarming. <laughs> and I th the, thing, the thing is, if we crack this open, then that means the Hell's Raiders would have access to it as well. I think regardless, I think Dust needs to know. Is this a Bridget Lacroix situation? And where there is more than one person 
that is the same. Let's go to our force unarmed here and see if we can generate enough strength to smash through this metal door here. With a tingling sensation, Dusk gets ready to strike with 41 strength. Okay, we're probably gonna wait until we have our full strength back. Okay, it looks like we are going to need something a little bit more. Um, we're gonna grab our crowbar and we're gonna see if that assists us here. And yes, it does. Looks like it's enough. And we're through. We are through. Let's put the crowbar back away for now. Make sure that we pick that back up and put it into our pack. And we are going to make sure that we go back to Tai Chi. Yes. And stepping upstairs. Okay. They're not here. At least not yet. But over here, we have the full outfit. Food person's mask, food person's cape, and some hard arm guards and leg guards. Interesting. Looks like the place has been trashed a little bit. Someone smashed the vending machine here. There is a zombie outside. Okay. Let's continue moving through here for now. We've got some sauerkraut and some canned corn in the fridge, which, you know, we're probably going to try and just eat right now. We are already full. Trouble down below. Okay. Well, it wasn't us. We've got some glove liners here. Yeah, it sounds like they're fighting zombies down below. Okay, so we are not going to linger. We're not going to be here for long. Let's grab that hard cheese, the soda, the yogurt. And it looks like we can climb higher on the roof. I wouldn't mind seeing if there are solar panels here. We'll just see what else we can find as well. Two medium disposable batteries and a regular medium disposable battery. We're going to take these disposables, like all of them, because they are certainly useful. And I do want to have a look at these arm guards here, just to see how they stack up against the other things that we're using. So we've got the scrap arm guards at the moment, and we have like the knee pads, etc. So let's just start trying to compare. We're going to go for the arm guards first of all, and we'll compare them against the hard arm guards. Okay, so it looks like the hard arm guards would be better, kind of. They do seem to have better coverage. The total coverage is 72%, whereas the scrap arm guards, I guess because the hard arm guards are elbows, lower arms, and upper arms, so it's a considerable, so it's a considerable amount of coverage. The average encumbrance is five as well, which is better than the scrap stuff, so I think we're probably going to go for the hard arm guards over the scrap ones. This was orcish armor anyway, so it was kind of rough to begin with. Next, I mean all that we have on our legs, we have the scrap boots. We also have the knee pads. Let's have a look to see how far the leg guards go. So the scrap boots are 80% coverage just on the feet. Okay, so we could wear them in combination with the hard leg guards and the hard leg guards are 100% going to be better than just the knee pads. So we need to go and drop a few things off here. We're probably also going to be getting rid of the elbow pads as well. We'll see if we can put them back on, but I think we're going to be good. So elbow pads, knee pads, arm guards, they're all going to go and we're going to wear the arm guards and the leg guards. Okay, so looks like we do have some things conflicting on our legs. Our legs are pretty encumbered right now, so let's go see if we can figure out what is causing that right now. I mean, looking at them, there isn't anything that's conflicting there, so yeah, no, no problems in that regard. Oh, sorry, it is warmth. The encumbrance is okay. 17 and 16, I'm all right with that. So we can't put on the pads, which that's totally fine. I think we're just going to stick with the ones that we've got now. Yeah, I feel like that is good. A dusk. Hey, can we wear the baseball cap at the moment? Looks like we might be able to with our, um, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. With our horns, they kind of stick through. I'm probably going to flip the cap around though, just because that's cool. Um, oh, well, we can't change side or anything like that. I think it would be easier for Dusk to wear it back slightly because then she could kind of just cut holes near the back for her horns to go through. It's not really adding any encumbrance to the head. It's like two encumbrance. It's totally fine. And our torso encumbrance right now is sweet. We've got the hydration pack on. We've got the AR on. That's okay. And the fingerless gloves, they're interacting weirdly with the claws because like we're wearing it outside of the nailed claws. There's no way for us to wear it underneath of it. I'm totally fine with the kind of encumbrance that we're getting from that right now. Wait, what have we got down here? More batteries. More batteries. Okay. Well, uh, I'm not sure which ones are in our pack right now, which ones aren't. So we're just going to put everything in the pack. I feel like that's a little easier. And we're going to open up onto the roof. And oh boy, there's quite a lot of dead. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where we're seeing them over there right now. Okay, so <laughs> there, some of them are quite hurt. So I think that they have been combating the folks that are down below. And you know what? That's okay. Dusk didn't directly 
bring that onto them. They brought that onto themselves. So, um, yeah, you reap what you sow, Hell's Raiders. I'm just checking to see if there are any more solar panels up here and we're not seeing anything. We are seeing a zombie brute down there though now, which is interesting. Oh, and I have also been informed that pretty much everything has the same chance to have solar panels on the roof when it comes to commercial properties. Even if they don't have um, ladders leading up to the roof, there is the same chance of their having solar panels on them. That, that goes for commercial things. Uh, things like evac shelters are always going to have solar panels. But yeah, okay, let's um, look at clambering back through that window then and making our way out of here. Um, okay, it's not too bad down here to begin with. Uh, let's check on the others. Oh, she's dead. Yeah, Shonda is 100% dead. Well, um, let's start to make our way over in your direction and we're just gonna make sure that she stays dead. And we're going to go through what you have left here. So the ballistic vest is most certainly useful. There is a pink tab here as well. It's acid. I don't know if we need any extra hallucinations right now. I think we're probably good. So yeah, we're not going to need anything else from this person. Does Dusk feel remorse here? No, she does not. And the other person is gone as well, it looks like. We've got a few different corpses here and there is a fair amount of blood in the corner. Moving around the corner though, we can't find who that blood belongs to, but we hear glass shattering outside. There could still be someone here dusk. Oh boy. We're moving around the corner, we find someone bleeding out in the bathroom. Leaning against the toilet and the sink there is Frederick Bustos, a dwarf. He's clutching a makeshift glaive right now. Dusk looks at him. Rot in hell. Yeah, let's um let's just leave you for now. We're going to close that door there. You probably shouldn't have shouted, but you know, that's the choice you made. Live with that decision. Dusk, let's smash that glass and let's get the hell out of here. Okay, we do have one zombie that we're going to have to kill before we move on. Homeopathic pills didn't help with becoming a zombie. Or maybe it did. Maybe it sped up the process. But for now, we have everything that we need. We are going to need to make our way back up towards Brewster, towards Food Person, uh, because I think we want to get them out of here now. So I think before we do move, we're going to put in one last quick save. Although I do believe that we are looking good here. I'm not going to mark the restaurant as explored because we haven't fully explored it yet. There could be more to it. But for now, we are just going to get out of town. We're going to try and see if we can just track along the same kind of track that we've taken before. So it should be relatively safe. And uh, yeah, <laughs> let's work at getting on out of here. Hello, it's just a listener. We'll take you out, so you shall listen no more. We don't need the MJ just as it is. If there's a joint, we'll take it. We don't want to do any processing right now. And Dusk, let's start to make our way on out. Up towards Food Person, and let's just see. That looks like a pretty good track right now. Let's take it. And Dusk has made it there pretty quickly. So we're going to continue on past the military vehicle that's here, I believe, or the security van. And we'll see if Food Person is still alive and kicking. And hopefully this is going to be all that we need to do to convince Food Person that we are someone that they should indeed trust. Should we put on the superhero suit before we talk to them? Maybe. But right now we don't have time for that dusk. Food Person, how's it going? Do you have them? Here it is. All the cards you'll need. Oh, and Food Person gives us a Food Kid badge. Yes! I knew you could do it. You prove your worth, and I'm proud to call you a friend. Okay, great. Now, I think what we're going to say is, uh, glad to help, I need no payment. Hopefully, then, that gives us a, a bit more of a boost. We're going to leave for a second. We are going to try and see if we can wear the Food Kid badge. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at the food kit badge that we've got here. A star-shaped plastic badge, food kit, is printed on it in bold letters. This badge marks the wearer as food person's trusty sidekick and comes with every kid's meal at food place. <laughs> Okay, great. Let's keep playing along here, Dusk. Greetings, friend. Hey, um, would you mind if we chat for a second? Yes, sure. Do you need something? Can you tell me again about this sidekick offer? Well, you've proved your worth. So, if you wish to join me as my sidekick, just say the word. Okay, well, that, um, sounds great. I don't have anything for you to do right now, though. Okay, okay. <laughs> right, so... Nothing else that we can do for Food Person right now. Um, so let's try talk again. Say we want to chat. Looking for a place to stay. So I don't think that we can try and get Food Person to 
join us again just yet. Food person would allow us to stay though if we could pass the persuasion test. I think we try that at the very least. Some sort of offer. A yet again, the sidekick. I mean, nothing else they can do for us right now. Okay, so food person is not willing to budge just yet, but I think if we give it a day or two, they will be. Oh yeah, that's right. We left some landmines here. Honestly, I might want to try and set these up near home. So I'm going to try and see if we can bring those back with us, if you don't mind. Uh, looks like we're going to have to put some others into our pack here. We'll put them all in there, okay. And uh, we shall leave you. For now, food person, we shall make our way back home. We've still got the mask down there. Filthy as it is. And let's see, Dusk, we should just be able to kind of roam back towards home without too much trouble. Um, <laughs> but who knows? Who knows what we might encounter. Having a look at that path, I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like we probably will encounter something along the way. Regardless, we will be ready for it. Wild. Okay, we have made it. <laughs> We've made it the entire way back. We didn't encounter anything, uh, which is great. I'm very, very happy that that has happened. Now, let's see. Um, Landmine. Where would we want them to be? Um, we could have them kind of be a little bit to the north of us, maybe kind of in this region here. I want to have them set up so that we can kind of... I'm also afraid now, if we screw up deploying it, is that something that we can do? I'm sure it is. Um, bury the landmine? Yeah, I mean, we we did it, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we should be able to remember that it's there. I really hope so. We'll do the same thing over here as well. Place landmine, bury the landmine, okay. I'm kind of just going to go in all the directions around here. Um, we'll do another one just over here. It's not in every one of the directions, but it's in most of them, you know. And then we'll do another one just like much further to the south here. Kind of just right by the road, I think. Landmine. There we go. Bury it. Okay. All right. I'm pretty sure that we, I mean, like even outside of our view, we still remember that they're there. So if we're moving around, we shouldn't just, you know, walk onto it. That would be, that'd be great. How are you doing, vehicle? 2% battery. Yeah, so I think we need to try and remove some of the crap that's in here that we don't need, like the, la the large storage battery that's just draining right now, except unfortunately we need to have a metal soaring tool. That is the thing that we really need at this stage. We also need a power drill as well to be able to attach our middle tank of gasoline to this frame so that we can get that going at the same time. So we need drills, we need tools desperately. So where are we going to go to try and get those things? So hardware stores are one option for us. Mega stores are another option as well. But let's just start with like hardware stores for now. So we've already explored that one there. We've got 96 options. So there's, there's a few. We have another one here in Lincoln. Buryville over here has one. It looks like they might actually have a few. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Okay, so Buryville, we have seen from atop the cathedral here, but we've not been to Buryville. We've got a strip mall along here, car dealership, electronics store. We've got these quite big urban city blocks here as well. Oh, and there's a church. I have wanted to go to a church for a long time, just like a standalone church, not a cathedral because I do believe there is a chance that we can maybe find some magicalism related things there. So I think us going out towards Burryville could very well be worth it. If we make it across the bridge here towards Stannard, there, I mean, there is the subway station right there, but honestly, I think we just take the bridge. We've got a small cemetery here, an office tower. The fire station could potentially have some good stuff for us. There is a shipwreck there though, so we'd need to be wary of that because there can be some pretty nasty things crawling around in there. Home improvement store, that's a great place for us to look. A music venue, which is right next to the church here. Altogether, I think that Burival has some good things going for it. Do we want to bring Elliot with us though? Is this something that we want to try and do tonight? It is still very, very early on. Elliot is still asleep at the moment. I think we're going to want to try and go for it tonight. Dusk is still feeling relatively fresh as far as, well, actually, you know, her weariness is completely fresh. So we're going to head back inside. I'm going to see about maybe just dropping off a few things and then we're going to hit the road. Oh yeah, the AR, I think we're probably going to leave behind. We have many other options on us. The Glock is a great ranged option. And then we have all of our powers. Oh. And grenades. Let us not forget about grenades. Oh, and of course, wands. Oh, I do think before we go, let's just uh, turn on our light here briefly. Oh, the lamp's not connected. All right, let's plug that in. There we go. All right, that's neat. We are going to read some memory cards that we've got. Just the two there. All right, not bad. And then I believe we've got a few different maps for us to look at. Epping Roadmap, we'll go and read that. I swear we had like 
a few other kind of map things. Ah, trail guide. There we go. Maps, drop them off, and let's turn off the light there. Excellent. So, heading back outside, we are going to be heading over towards Stannard, first of all. We'll see what we got going on there. And of course, we did have the orc, what? Goblin outpost. That was not a goblin outpost when we were there last. That was a orc outpost. Okay, now I'm intrigued. Now I'm very intrigued. A goblin outpost. Okay, Dusk. I think I know where we're going first. We are going to need to be wary of that mass grave. I think there has probably been a few encounters over that way already. So um, yeah, safe mode on. Let's head in that direction. And of course, you know, it is a foggy night. No surprises there. And we're going to try and go along the way that we've been before because uh, yeah, it gives me some comfort that we're not going to walk directly into an ambush. But hey, yeah, there were definitely orcs here before, so it would seem that goblins have moved in in their stead. At least, that's what the game seems to be telling us here. So, let's see what is going on. We've got a long sword just chilling here that we left behind. Now, we might have actually cleared the place out, um, quite possibly. I will have a look through here, though. We do have some vacuum sealed meat, but it's rotten. So, not a complete vacuum seal. And hey, that's an orc warrior. Okay, yes, yeah, so even though it was saying that this is a goblin encampment. It is indeed uh, orcs that are here right now. So this orc we are going to send reeling back because we're not going to take any chances. Um, <laughs> that did some work there, Dust. Okay. Oh boy. And we got two more that have just come out the darkness towards us. So mm, three. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's 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 a considerable amount there for us to deal with. I honestly think one of the best ways to fight a lot. Oh boy. That's even more now. Okay. We're going to go, Dusk. We are going to go. We're not going to do this fight just with her because that's silly. We could throw a grenade at the orcs. But do we need to? Do we really need to? Yeah, we know that they've been hunting people in the area here, but that's exactly what Dusk's brother does, so can she judge? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, well, we're back down on the road here now. We are starting to approach uh, the bridge to the south here. Okay, here we go. We are making our way up onto it. Head across towards the other side. We do need to be wary that this there could very well be mines on the bridge, so I'm going to kind of stick to the side here if possible. Looks like we're okay so far. We are hearing some combat, though. So... We have the cemetery here, the office. I think we're probably just gonna to wanna to try and check out the fire station. We could dip into the subway to see what kind of tools that they have in their little office area. Um, we could also just flash our light here, see what's going on, a bad time. A bad time is what's currently going on. Actually, no, not necessarily. These are Brachiosauruses, but they are living. And they're kind of helping us out right now by killing the zombies that are around here. But they could kind of, um, you know, get angry with us. So we don't want that. Let's just try and stay away from them right now. They could also become zombified. There are definitely some zombified creatures around us right now. So um, I think we're going to try and see if we can play this a little safe dusk. Just try and move around where we think they are. We should be able to hear them. We've got a zapper that's making its way down towards us. That's an armored Aptosaurus. Yeah, let's definitely stay away from that. It's used as zebra crossing because we are responsible. Check out this car really quick as well, just a city car. It's very damaged. And let's maybe go to the subway first if we can. Yeah, it should be just to the right of us now. There it is, okay. And no doubt we will be able to get some subway maps here too. So we're just gonna go and smash this glass here. And let's grab the standard subway map. We'll have a look at that once we make our way down here. And, oh. Zombie Predator, up here it looks like. Yes, it's faster than us and it has some wickedly wild joints. All right, we're gonna throw that back against the wall. It is quite close to us though, so I don't know if it's gonna do too much damage. It does enough, it does enough. Let's see what else is in the stylish world. Nothing that we want, okay. Uh, but we are going to try and spend a little bit of time here just to work on our cards because we've got so many cash cards right now. It'd be nice to reduce that number down just a little bit. Ooh, okay. A little bit of ammunition, we'll, we'll take that. We'll also take the antibiotics. The tough zombie is making its way on over towards us and it's close enough that we should probably stop what we're doing. Let's kill that one first, go for you next. Just wait for a second here, punch you down and we'll see what else we can grab. Nothing else that we want from them, so we'll just take the ammunition. I think that we've cleared, nope, not entirely. We do have a tough zombie here still, but the tough zombies really are not that tough to us now. They might have slightly tougher skin, so they seem to be able to resist our bites, but we've also got some memory cards here, which we are going to grab, fantastic. 
And let's just spend a little bit of time here, checking to see what we have on them. Nice. Didn't even need to turn the screen on. We will just drop the rest of those cards on the ground. All right. And let's see if we can find a working ATM. This one's good, so we'll deposit all of our money, uh, which is, we've got a lot of it, and we'll withdraw all of it just onto that singular card. And now we can drop off these 17 extras. Hang on. Did we not withdraw that then? Your account now holds zero. Okay, so where is the card that has all of our money on it? Is it hidden in something, perhaps? Oh no, here it is. Okay, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know why we weren't seeing that before. Nearly $30,000. Dusk, you're doing pretty well for yourself here. What have we got down here? Um, nothing that we need. <laughs> we've got funnels, we've got hammers, we've got concrete mixers and kilns, but not what we actually want. That is unfortunate, but hey, we've got lots of other places that we're gonna be checking out. Oh, before we leave here, let's um, just activate, I wanna say, our cell phone, and we're gonna have a read of the subway map, just to see if that adds to what we knew of the area. Extinguishing that light, let's just have a look down here. Okay, so that one, we've got some scientists down here, that connects up to that main one that has taken us through much of the area. Okay, up we go back onto the surface and outside turn on safe mode and our next and our next destination is going to be the fire station over here we've seen a zapper so we've lost our safe mode that's okay hello there zombie goodbye zombie oh okay and we've just been grappled by a grappler or at least it tried to grapple us and it failed miserably okay where are the firefighters then? Because they will be around here somewhere. If they're not outside, they're going to be in here. Um, let's close that behind us. Hello there. Hi. We'll let you stumble towards us. A few good criticals there, which were doing some really decent damage for us. Very nice dusk. We'll see what else we have here. Just a, a few firefighters so far. No surprises there. And of course, the firefighters, they do have a little bit better equipment than what your average zombie is going to have. And it does seem like our attacking is damaging their turnout gear as we are, you know, fighting through it. Polycarbonate sheets. I feel like that's something that we're probably going to want eventually. But right this second, I'm going to pass it up. Okay. <laughs> Looks like we've got a bit of fun ahead of us here. Let's hold the door, Dusk. They should start to make their way down here. If we can fight them one at a time here, that's going to be much, much better for us. Control the flow of the battle. And we've got up there one that's just dicking around on the dining room table right now. I think we should be able to go face that one totally fine. Knocking it back a few times there with our palm strikes, it actually bled to death in the end. We will check the wallets, we'll take the cash cards where we find them. I am hoping that we'll be able to use them on some machines eventually. There is that ammunition machine that we had like right back at the very start of the game. We also have a proper gas mask here as well. Now having a look at what we have going on down here. I think we just had a filter mask, but we don't even have that now. So it's good for us to have at least one thing like that. We can also just take the cartridges out. So that works out for us. We've got some turnout trousers here as well. So what we can do is have a look at those compared to what are we wearing at the moment? Army pants. So let's compare those to the turnout trousers. The trousers will have better protection in general but they're also gonna be more encumbering. 14 encumbrance, 20 when full, and a warmth of 30. So they're gonna be pretty hardcore. We're already pretty warm to begin with. We're in summer. There are a heavy pair of protective overalls worn by firefighters as protection against heat. Also, this is worn on the outside. So it's kind of where our hard guards are going to be. It does have a few different pockets. I think we just stick with the army pants for now. Otherwise, we're gonna slow ourselves down just too much, and Dusk being quick in combat does make a big difference. The PBA mask is a lot better than the gas mask, so I wouldn't mind having a clean one of those if we can, but if we can't find anything like that, I'm also totally fine. It doesn't look like we are going to find anything like that. That's okay. Let's mark this as explored, and I'm half tempted to see what's going on with the shipwreck over here before we start to make our way to the north. We could just have a little peek, couldn't we, Dusk? See what's occurring over there? We're hearing a piercing wail over to the west. Could be a zombie, could be something else. Well, there's a cuspated dog, but I don't think that's what was making all that noise. No, no doubt it is something else in the dark. Ooh, and we're hearing human voices amongst the screaming. Someone shouting out about a shocker in the distance. Marl 
Marion Yellow Swenson, who is a bandit, has seen a shocker somewhere nearby. Okay, so we can actually see where she was calling out from, which is over here towards the west. Actually, that's where the piercing whale is from. Okay, so we don't actually know where the other person was calling out from. So we are going to want to be cautious here. What kind of vehicle is this? It's a cube van, and I don't think it belongs to anyone, but we can hear some activity on the other side of it. We also do have some cargo space in here. We'll see what's stacked away. Way. Toolbox with nothing in it. Okay, we need to be very cautious with what we do here now. We're hearing lots of fighting going on. I'm kind of tempted just to turn on our light for a second. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we have a feral dwarf here that seemed to be following Dusk in the dark. And then over here, we have the zombies fighting something else. Razor claws. A man-sized crustacean clad in armor-like chitin, capable of emitting horrible shrieking noises, often spotted near shipwrecks or other dark, damp places which may be used as nesting grounds. Okay, if we're going to try and fight anything like that, I'm not saying we should, but if we're going to, we probably want to have an electrical discharge going and we we would also want to have our voltaic strikes set and ready to go. Unfortunately, we are going to have to fight a little bit here. and We've been hit in the torso um, by this feral dwarf, which we will quickly try and dispatch before it can throw more rocks at us. And we'll try and move this way because ideally the zombies go and fight those razor claws and then we can investigate the shipwreck without too much trouble. That's the plan. The shocker seems to be kind of following us. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that mess. What a beautiful mess it is. <laughs> it's really going on here, Dusk. Okay, so we've got a shrieking razor claw here. It is going to start making its way up towards us, it looks like. Dusk strikes it, stabbing it with her claws there. She stunned it. It is bleeding. It's making its way back on over towards us and we've got more than one in the area which makes me nervous. We are palm striking them and we're not doing any damage. We're not getting through their armor. That's not good, but we do seem to be much faster than these things. Oh boy, so we can use that to our advantage. That is an alpha razor claw, blood red and gigantic. It has sword like pincers and it serves as the protector of the nest. Okay, <laughs> well, we are going to let them continue fighting there and Dusk is going to just try and make her way around the outskirts of this shipwreck. I don't know if we're going to be able to fight our way in there. I really do not know. Before the shrieking that's going on, hmm, I'm tempted here to try and see if we can do a little bit of damage slamming that one against the ship. We've got dirt here behind us, so I feel like that kind of works for us. All right, a good angle. Let's go and force shove it back against the wall here and let's investigate and see. We do not see it. So we might have actually slammed it over here. There is some hemolymph splatter and we can see stairs actually in the ship. I don't know if we can get to that easily. Uh, we'd have to clamber over wreckage. We may injure ourselves. Uh, here we go. We have an in. We also have a razor claw in here. Right. We have more than one razor claw in here. How about you take a step towards me? There we go. And we're going to force shove you back and away from here, slamming it against the wall. Cracks its chitinous shell. And we're going to do the same thing to this one up here as well. We've got another that's coming for us. Uh, we need it to be on the right kind of angle for us to damage it though. And I feel like maybe this will work if we stand up here, slam it. And I, yeah, I think it died. It said it died. It is probably underneath the wreckage somewhere though. Okay, so let's smash the corpse that's here. Unfortunately, the ones that are under the wreckage, we can't do anything about them. We did just see another razor claw, briefly, and it's gone awful quiet, hasn't it? <laughs> it really has. Terribly quiet. Okay, you are going to be a little bit of a problem for us. How about you come up in this direction? You are doing something. Slamming into the dirt? It's hard to tell. Oh, tough zombie's fighting you, and the tough zombie is dead. That died very quickly there. Okay, and they seem to be able to move through the water pretty quickly as well. So let's see what we can do here. Oh boy. Um, I think this angle might work. Let's slam you against the wall. Dusk, you're amazing. Okay, moving back over here as well. We're going to try and do the same kind of thing. Slam that one back against the wall there. Now, I think their own weight and their own rigidity is kind of working against them here. If this angle works, I'll be happy. I don't know if it did. I think we just kind of knocked it all the way back towards there. Um, okay, backing up again, Dusk. We're going to have to be patient, wait for them to kind of come towards us. What I want to try and do is make our way down towards this one, if possible. It looks like we might be able to do it. Um, so the shortest path to make it to the stairs there is trying to go through this wreckage. We can try and clear it. Uh, let's see. Okay, we keep our balance. We just managed to. Stepping down below, 
All right, we're greeted by a razor claw that is tracking our direction. Dusk reaches out with her hand, slamming it back against the wall. It is still alive. Reaching out with her mind, she crushes it, but doesn't do quite enough damage to finish it off. So as it starts to come towards us, let's get ready to try and strike it. A few good strikes seems to do what we need it to. And I think the body is now over there. All right, oh boy, and we have yet another. It was very hard to see how much damage we did then, um, I'm going to try and move to the side here. Oh, is that running away? It's hard to tell. Slamming it against the wall, though. It is no longer alive. Okay, what have we got down here? Denim overalls. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm intrigued to see what else we might actually find in this shipwreck, because I can't say I've looked at them all that much. We do have a standing tank here. No idea what's in it. Uh, doesn't look like there was. Doesn't look like there was actually anything in it at all. Moving on to some light machinery we clamber out of there nothing else in this room from what we can see let's turn on the light though just to be certain yep not seeing anything dusk so we're going to continue on maybe try and smash where that body was and we'll smash this one as well just to ensure that they are going to stay dead for now another razor claw in the distance okay i am wary of how dangerous they might be in the water let's try and slam it from here okay we feel some tingling we do some good damage Let's chuck in a mind hammer, and that's enough to take it out. Telekinesis is doing work against these things. Otherwise, we would need to be expending, I feel like, a considerable amount of ammunition here. We are expending calories, though. It looks like we're going to need to expend some more. There are three razor claws in the basement here. And, yeah, we've got wreckage between us and this one here. I'm going to try and see if we can just damage it regularly. Um... <sighs> and see how that goes. We can hear it screaming out here. The criticals do seem to help, and the double-handed palm strike there did 18 damage against it. Nice. The scream dazes us though, so that's not great. We don't like being dazed. We managed to do a stab there for two damage. A critical there gets us 11. Okay, so we can actually fight these things in melee, especially with these palm strikes knocking them back. Tai Chi is doing some work against these things here. We are suffering from extreme activity though, so we need to be wary. We are, you know, using a fair bit of energy. Okay, all right, making it further in here. We're gonna reach out, slam that one back. It is dead, that's good. And there is something else down here. Don't know what it is. Could be an egg, it's a little hard to tell. Okay, you there, let's see what we can do about you. We're gonna have to move back into the water, maybe over towards the side here. Let's try and slam you back against the far wall there. We succeeded, but I don't think we killed you, no. Not by a long shot. It's shrieking, it's heading back towards us. Dusk misses a few strikes, but then finally gets something here. Even if we don't do damage to it, we still seem to be able to knock it back, especially if we are waiting that turn in between. It's very, very useful. So you there, we're gonna slam you back against that wall. Does pretty good damage. Ideally, we don't um, have them die in the metal, metal wreckage because then we can't smash the corpse. Not that I'm planning on sticking around here for all that long. All right, striking you, knocking you back there. I think even if we do kill you, we're going to probably knock you into the wreckage. So let's just try and move back here, see if that helps us. We get a little bit closer. Looked like a roundhouse kick there almost, but yeah, it's just palm work that's doing all of this for us at the moment. And now, oh, okay. Not sure what that error is, but we're going to ignore that for now. We hear an explosion from the east and above. Intriguing. What is this here? It's an active backup generator. Okay. A ubiquitous piece of compact machinery meant for running anything from bathroom lights to electric stoves and other necessities when the grid and electricity is unavailable. This one is currently running. You can hear it humming slightly when you are very close. Can we, okay, we can move it around. Can we grab it? We can't grab it. It collides with something. We can grab it. Can we kind of like break it down then so that we can move it? Will deconstructing help here? No, it's too dark. All right, let's turn on the cell phone. Because if we could kind of break it down for us to be able to move it, that would be fantastic. Can't connect it to anything. Turn off reactor, take down appliance. Okay, let's do that. Yep, take it down. It's taken a while, but we've done it. We've taken down the backup generator here. So what kind of generator is this then? Contains a liquid. Okay, so it's got a diesel engine, so we're fueling it with diesel. Neat. I think we're going to try and see if we can take that back with us. Um, so we're just going to have to try and haul it up from this wreckage here. Let's say haul everything, because I don't think there is anything else down here for us. Yep. Um, oh boy, that's going to be difficult to move. And we might even lose it. So what we're going to do here is stop hauling, step onto the middle wreckage, and then we're just going to have to try and shift it. Uh, we don't want to be dragging the razor claw with us as well. So just that for now, backup generator. There we go. We'll continue hauling through the water, and we'll go up the stairs. Okay, so 
kind of similar situation here. We will stop hauling, step onto the wreckage. Uh, damn, it's going to be wreckage no matter what. Yeah, I'm just worried about us losing it in the wreckage there. If we do, we're going to have to... Tr yeah, no, we can't. We can't move it. Um, can we try and haul it through this here? Nope. We lose. Okay. What if we open this? That doesn't really help us. Also, we need to turn off this flashlight. Um, yeah, we really need to too. Uh, we've got a shrieking razor claw making its way on over towards us now. Dusk is just going to continue to try and pummel this thing, sending it away from her. Doing a wicked bite. 27 damage. That's really freaking good. All right, we're just going to keep on striking, passing turns, waiting for it to get closer here, striking until the thing is dead. We'll smash that position there. And I think I'm going to have to try and clear some wreckage here if we can. Okay, it, it didn't actually take all that long for us to do that. So I'm happy to see that. Hauling it away. We have a backup generator now. Uh, not what I intended. <laughs> and I think if we were to try and just leave this somewhere, we'd probably leave it just over by the bridge because no doubt that's going to be the way that we end up coming back. But for now, Legionnaires, that is where we're going to be wrapping things up for today's episode. Dusk have managed to become the sidekick of Food Person, yet it's been too close to the last time we asked Food Person to join us, so we will need to be patient for now, but know in time that Dusk will return to Food Person and will attempt to persuade them to join us. It's 2am, we're further through the night, Elliot still sleeping soundly at home. Dusk hopes to be able to surprise him with some goodies in the morning, tools that they can use to continue climbing that technological ladder. As ever, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, and hey, if you did, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rykon, you have all been awesome, and until next time, stay tuned.